Yeah, he continues just to create to continue creating music up until you know the cancer got him, mm-hmm. and the amount of music that he had probably still unreleased is just amazing. I mean, they were saying that he had archives in his house because he eventually had bought back most of his masters yeah. from before he started his own stuff. Yeah, too. way before. Yeah, and he recorded almost all of his live performances, mm-hmm. so he had just archives and archives and archives in this house yeah and i mean i literally saw a documentary it was so funny it literally looked like they were going to an archaeological archaeological dig <laughs> these guys they had the fucking hats with the yeah. lights on them yeah. and they're like oh wow look at all this stuff and it's like he's this wasn't that long ago dude he, right. he was alive three months ago yeah you know what i mean yeah. like but it's just insane the amount of creativity and the prolific nature of his work mm-hmm it's really unmatched. Mm-hmm. I mean, in in mo- the modern era. I yeah. mean, who has put out that much music by themselves? Yeah, definitely. And just him as a composer, and him as a person that had the ear for music. Like his both sons, like um, Dweezil and Ahmet, were just like they can't believe his ability to like hear a wrong note. Like right. you know, like with all that's going on on stage, and he will get it. He will hear it and know exactly what's going on. That and his ability to just keep making music to um what did he say his his goal pretty much was to annoy a lot of people that you know that got annoyed really quickly like if you're the guy that gets mad when somebody cracks a joke then you've got a target on your back according to frank zappa and that also made me laugh it kind of made me sad because i was thinking about it he said something like um you know, I'm down to offend anybody that's easily offended. Yeah. And I'm just like, fuck, I wish Frank was around. Because yeah. there's so many people that are easily offended. Yeah, and yeah. And he would just destroy everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, I really would have loved to hear what he would have to say about, you know, the present day. That's why. But, um... Had to go. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, some people probably didn't want that. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, and he was saying th- the Dweezil and Ahmet were saying that you know he could literally be in a room with a full orchestra mm-hmm. and pick out you know a cer- one wrong note. Yeah, which is something that he had in common with another Francis, uh, Francis Sinatra. Yeah, that's you know, true. James Brown used to fine you five dollars if you mess up. <laughs> yeah, you ever saw him yeah, on stage yeah. going five, five? That was the amount of money that he was charging his band for like screwing up. And I remember listening to those performances and not hearing like mm. <laughs> it's all sounded good to me. Right. But yeah, yeah, that ability, also the ability to just um, when Ruth was saying anything could go down on stage and mm-hmm. he would do like a hand signal or right. he would like mention he would just be like and montana and then all of a sudden the, bo- the band would have to like start playing that you right. know that like that in itself was crazy and you would think like as a composer as a band leader he would thrive the most when he did his work with the orchestras and the symphonies Mm -hmm. but he kind of said that that was like the worst time for him because he felt like the quality of the music like they didn't really you know exude everything that he wanted to like portray in his music but that probably had to do with them kind of being like uh, I know they're skilled musicians, but it's kind of like box musicians. Right. You know, it's it, and like that whole freedom uh, and getting into playing these notes, they probably, while they were playing the notes, were like, what the fuck am I playing? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They know? weren't used, they were definitely not used to any kind of thing like that. Yeah. But yeah, definitely the, one of the greatest music minds of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. It's severely underrated because a lot of people, again, had some problems with him. Yeah. And if it wasn't for that, I think he would be widely regarded as not only one of the best guitar players players mm-hmm. one of the most prolific composers all all of these things one of the most prolific producers yeah you know what i mean but uh, he was not getting that credit for a lot of different reasons yeah. so we're hoping that this can uh you know i don't know i'm not not that we do anything but we're we want to spread the knowledge you know what yeah. i mean uh this will probably bring out uh, a couple of trolls that we get uh on a zappa on a zappa <laughs> <laughs> the Zappa reaction who absolutely trolls welcome all trolls welcome we'll take it if you're trolling us we'll just take it as that being a tribute of you to Frank I was about to say yeah I was just thinking about that before I said it like they become a Zappa you yeah, know what yeah, I mean because yeah. we'll have people be like Zappa talented this isn't music ha ha ha, 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 ha. you know but something else I wanted to say, this is what I was saying. I feel like um, it wasn't really talked about, like his family life. I feel like um, he probably, him and his wife might have had a, some troubles that really didn't get out there. Mm-hmm. Because he, before he died, he said to Gail, his wife, sell everything, get out of the music business, it's fucking evil. Yeah. 
And as soon as he died, she did the exact opposite. Right. She created like the Zappa family trust mm -hmm. and cr and bestowed upon the, the children percentages that she thought was fair. Mm -hmm. So she ended up giving Ahmet and Diva 33% each mm -hmm. and Moon Unit and Dweezil 20% each. Mm -hmm. So now what that means is that if Dweezil or or Moon Unit want to use any of Frank's music, they have to go to their younger siblings for permission. Yeah. Which is kind of fucked. Yeah. And Dweezil, as a lot of people would probably know, he really carried on the torch for yeah, Frank. Absolutely. Because he had the guitar chops and he was, you know, a very talented musician himself. Mm -hmm. And he started touring Frank's music as Zappa plays Zappa. Right. And he actually got in trouble with his own fucking family yeah. for using his own last name. That he did. They sent him a cease and desist letter. Yeah. And he, this is really funny though, but he ended up being like, oh, okay. So he ended up making a tour called like the fuck you, I'll play whatever I want tour, the cease and, <laughs> cease and desist version yeah. or whatever, <laughs> which is great. And I think Frank would have appreciated that. But that's crazy, right? That you would like, yeah. that's your brother. Yeah. And your, your dad, you're going to really be a stickler about it like that? Listen, what do the contracts say, Dan? No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't read it. I wasn't there. Sorry. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I know we're definitely missing things. Mm -hmm. Like, there's just so, he's done so much. I mean, if we tried to name all of his albums, that could be a whole hour podcast by itself. Uh, yeah, all the albums and all the musicians, you know, that were worked with him. Let, you know, let, no, it just couldn't happen. There's just no way. So, again, like, we definitely miss some things. Like, tell us what we miss. Mm -hmm. Tell us what your favorite era of Zappa is. You know, it's funny. We used to say, tell us what your favorite Zappa album is. Yeah. But if everyone's like, there's no fucking way I could pick one album. Yeah. There's so many different kinds of stuff styles of music so i feel like it's more fair to tell us what your favorite era yeah of zap is do you have a favorite era i think the like the 77 7 or to 84 era yeah right because mm -hmm. like with um the palladium concert and halloween yep that's just like it just feels special when mm -hmm. you when you watch those videos you're like this is just some kind of magic here yeah not to say sure. that the other versions aren't right but i don't know there's just something about that i just feel like he was really at peak like live yeah form there yeah he, you know he was definitely in the zappa pocket the zocket the zocket <laughs> <laughs> He's always in the socket, tearing up those solos. Yeah. And it's something I've said um, in some of the videos that we did reacting to his music. I always thought it was really cool how he was so comfortable letting everybody have their shine. Mm -hmm. Like, he didn't seem like somebody that was like, no, 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 this is my music. All The attention has to be on me all the time. Like, right. He really understood, like, all those musicians were able to bring something special to the table, mm -hmm. and he let them go for it. Yeah. And I even saw Ruth was saying something like, you know, it was super structured. We had to be under, like, you know, the iron rule of Zappa. Like, no drugs, no this, blah, blah, blah. Like, we had, it was very strict. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there was a lot of freedom in the music. Because at any point, you know, he had those, the, the hand gestures or whatever. Right. He might just say something, all right, what do you say, Ruth? And then she plays a little, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. there's still a lot of freedom in it, even though it was so regimented. Yeah. Which is sure. something that a lot of musicians said they really appreciated about it. Yeah. You know? Sounds cool. Man, oh man, Mr. Zappa, what a beacon of freedom. I'm I'm going to call the presidents of Prague and also of um of Czechos and also the Slovakia. The Czech Republic and Slovakia. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm definitely going to call them up and see, you know, if they want anything represented over here in America, they could just call Sight After Dark. Yeah. Yeah, why not? And then they'll get a call in a month. Hey, you could do business with America or Sight After Dark. Okay? <laughs> But um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I just I feel like I'm missing something. I don't. It's just like, but it's, again, there's just so much to possibly talk about. It's like, and you know, we we just go off the cuff for this. We don't. We're not looking at notes while we're doing this. So no. so let us know what we missed. Let us know what you like most about Frank. Let us know what stands out the most to you when you think about Frank. Uh huh. For me, it just again how smart he is as a person not even necessarily just the music yeah just how like even you look at his eyes and it's like this is a smart fucking guy yeah you know when i was doing research i was just like i don't know if i want to hear the music or if i just want to hear him talk right you know it, it was a hard 
split down the middle you know so yeah i i just love to hear him talk you know about everything there was this um one interview that he did i just have to put this in here this one interview he was overseas and they were like okay well you make all your music making fun of the american way and stuff like that and now we see you're driving a cadillac now (laughs) he's like so what they're like well why would you be driving that isn't that like you know they're basically saying that's like the american car like you know what i mean a caddy and it's like everybody when you make it you get the caddy and he's like so what he was like the the difference is i was broke when i started he was like if i had the money to get a caddy then i would have had a caddy then too yeah you know so that was the funny part about that interview and then they even made like a little film after it where they Mm -hmm. like they put the interviewer inside the caddy and he refused to get out because the caddy was so roomy and (laughs) it was great and like i mean just a total america's first troll that's a bad bad way to say it but that's a good a way to say it a troll pioneer exactly <laughs> <laughs> oh he also he put out a movie at one point 200 motels yes yeah he part of the the band at one point was a uh, flow and eddie yeah from the turtles yeah who couldn't use their original names either in the turtles because they were hit with a bunch of lawsuits and concerns because right, right. of that whoa come yeah. on and it's just funny because that show because during the time when they were in the band it was very like slapstick like comedy oriented yeah. which again could be why another reason why he's considered like the godfather of comedy rock mm-hmm. um and that's just it's such a contrast to like his stuff before which was so was very uh political and satire yeah to just go into this like comedy and then eventually go back to making fun of the other side of the political spectrum right which is all those the fucking evangelicals and shit yeah with their heavenly bank accounts <laughs> and such <laughs> so they're just I, that's what i'm saying it's like i really just hope that we're doing him justice yeah me because too. there's so many different aspects to who frank was mm-hmm. not only in business mm-hmm. but in music but mm-hmm. in art you know, and he just did so many things that it's really hard to sum it up in a one hour conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I appreciate his advocacy for self learning, self teaching, you mm-hmm. know, because what did he say? I'm a middle aged dad of four kids, middle aged Italian dad, okay, because that's a difference. Hey. Uh, four kids. And he was like with a high school education, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I think he went to like one semester of college and then yeah. just left. But like, where he learned how to film porn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but like, teaching yourselves, if you want to learn something, if you want to know something, you go out and do it. And this is like, he was teaching himself this before there was an internet. He actually right. put on shoes, left the house and was like, this is my mission today. And that's like one of the greatest things and uh, uh, such a genius artist could mm-hmm. ever say to anybody that's trying to get into not only music, but trying to do anything. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, and that's a good point. I feel like listening to Frank... Not only makes you, you know, kind of understand him, but it makes you think more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's the greatest thing that an artist can really do is to like create sparks in other people. Mm -hmm. And especially like, you know, I mean, I would say nobody was making music like him at the time, but nobody's really ever made music exactly like him. No. So I just imagine there's so many people that probably heard Zappa for the first time and just like, you know, a light bulb went off their head. Mm -hmm. They're just like, wait, you could... You could do something like this? <laughs> this is insane. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this the amount of creativity that was probably sparked because of Frank is, you know, that's something that, you know, you can't really quantify that, right. but it's just, it's just truth. Mm-hmm.